Hello and welcome back everybody. So we continue what we have just done. Only now we are considering smoothing problems. So that is nonlinear regression where we try to estimate some mean curve. And they come in two different flavors. So I do two videos about that. And we start with kernel based methods, which is the Nadaraya Watson estimator. And I also do local linear estimation. And then later in another video, we will discuss a discuss k nearest neighbor estimation. Okay, let's start with Nadaraya Watson. So here we know how we compute the estimator. It's m hat h of x. That's going to be model mean at the point x. That is done by using the kh as a weight. So we do kh of x minus xi times yi, and we need to normalize the weights. So we just divide by the sum of all weights. So k a x minus xi. And the sums go over all data, so i from 1 to n. Okay, and to choose h, what we are going to minimize is the mean squared error. So we are going to do sum i from 1 to n, and then we do the estimate m hat h of x minus the best approximation to the truth, so yi, the data squared. And we can divide by n if we want to. And the thing we have discussed in section 8 is that would be an exceedingly bad idea. And what we should be doing instead is we should use leave one out cross validation. So here we compute the estimate without using the sample number i. And that here we can very nearly do with what we have already seen. So there is only one more idea one needs, namely, well, we use outer again, x, x subtraction, and maybe I call that dx or something. And then we use d norm to apply kh and get this matrix k. So dx standard deviation is h. And then we know what to do. We want to leave one out estimate. So we do diagonal of k equals zero, and we do things like call sums k. And there are two new ingredients. One is trivial, we don't need means here, we need just sums, so call sums k would give us the denominator. But the other new thing is more interesting, namely we need kh x minus xi times yi. And there is a trick in R to do that without a loop. So let's step back for a second. We know that matrix vector multiplication in R is written in this funny way that we have to write percent multiplication sign percent instead of just multiplication sign. And that gives us the standard matrix vector multiplication from linear algebra. And it turns out if you do that without the percent sign, then R tries to do some element-wise multiplication. Let me just draw a matrix. Then what R does, if you multiply by x, it multiplies this by x1, that by x2, and so on, and that by xn. And it would happily continue to multiply a 1, 2, x, n plus 1 here if x had enough elements. But once it has reached the end of x, so once it has run out of elements here, what it will do is we'll just start over. So the trick is if x has the same number of elements as a has rows, and we start over once we reach the end of x, that happens always at the end of a column. So here we would now get a12 x1 all the way down up to a n2 xn. And then we have run out of elements of x again and we start over. So that happens for every column and the last column is a1 m x1, a2 m x2 up to a n m xn. And we can utilize this mechanism to compute this. We just need to check we have the rows and columns right, so that kh x minus xi. If we do that, we said earlier we have the i correspond to the rows of the matrix. So each column corresponds to the terms in one sum. And that is good for us, namely we want to have the first element in the sum, so the first row multiplied with y1, the second row multiplied with y2, and so on. So what we can do here is we can just do call sums k times y to get the numerator in that expression. And then you see I wrote them in the wrong order here now, but we divide that thing divided by this thing, and that gives us our estimate. And both of them have k's here, so if I set the k's to zero, like this, 
that just means we are leaving out terms from the sum. And that is exactly what we need for getting this m hat i. We need to just leave out i equals j here, if xj is here, and we need to leave out i is j here, and then we evaluate at xj, and then, well, I need to be a bit careful with the indices, let's do it like that. So that's what we want, and you see how we do that, so these commands here are enough. Good, and the R code is in the notes, I'll leave it to you to read, but the only new idea was this k times y multiplies rows. So that's what we needed. Then the other estimator I want to discuss here is a bit more difficult, namely that is local linear regression. And there we have seen m hat h x is basis vector which projects everything on the first or zeros component, then x transpose w x inverse, x transpose w y, and x is the design matrix. And here it takes this point where we evaluate the estimate into account. So x has a column of ones here, and then it has x1 minus x, x2 minus x, and so on up to xn minus x. And if we would be doing polynomial regression, there would now be x1 minus x squared, but we are doing local linear regression, so that means first order polynomials, so these extra terms are not there. And the matrix W, we also know that the diagonal matrix, so that has zeros nearly everywhere. And on the diagonal, it has the weights we use. And for the weights, we said we would use kh x minus x1, kh x minus x2, all the way up to kh x minus xn. So that is what we get. And here we said we subtracted, at the time we said, we subtracted these x only for stability, and since the degree is 1, we are not so worried about that here. So what I want to do here is I will go back to the basic version and leave these out, because it simplifies the algebra a bit. Now my aim is to turn that expression into something which looks more similar to this kind of expression, that we can reuse our tricks in R again and work that out efficiently and can compute n estimates without having to redo the game n times. So I show you how that is done. So the matrix here, let me see whether I can remove that, is now like this. And I want to first work out what that is in terms of the xi and x. So first thing we need to work out is x transpose wx. So x transpose wx is, well x transpose is once in the first row and x1 up to xn in the second row, and you see that has simplified now a bit by me not subtracting the x. Then w is kh x1 minus x, I've swapped the order here but that does not matter, up to kh xn minus x, it does not matter because kh is a matrix, so kh of minus x equals kh of plus x. And then here we have an x, so it's just column of ones, and then x1 up to xn. Okay, there are two products. I do the second one first, multiplying a diagonal matrix from the left to another matrix, just multiply the first row with the first element, and so on up to the last row with the last diagonal element, so that we can do straight away. So I copy that, and then we get kh x1 minus x, and kh x1 minus x times x1, up to down here kh xn minus x, kh xn minus x times xn. So as I said, I just multiply each row of this matrix with the corresponding diagonal element. And now, well, now we are getting a 2 by 2 matrix. The top left element has these ones with these kh, so that will be just the sum of the kh. So leave a lot of space because the four elements are a bit complicated, but top left is sum i from 1 to n, kh xi minus x. Actually, let's switch this back. I just checked the notes. In the notes it's this way. I thought it was the other way. It does not matter, still because kh is symmetric. Then maybe let's do second row first column, then we have xi times the kh summed up. So what we get is sum i from 1 to n, kh x minus xi times xi. Then second column will be slightly more complicated, but not much. So ones with this will be kh times xi summed up. So it's sum i from 1 to n, kh 
x minus xi times xi. And finally, second row, second column, you see is xi times kh times xi, so that's kh times xi squared. So it's sum i from 1 to n, kh x minus xi, xi squared. And let me just remind you, that was x transpose wx. Now we need the inverse of that matrix, and that can be done, because we know if we have matrix A, B, C, D inverse, there's a formula for that, and that's 1 over A, D minus B, C times the diagonal element swap, so it's D and A, and the others stay but get a minus in front, so it's minus B and minus C. So that's the general formula. So if we apply that, then we get X transpose W X inverse, I will squeeze it in here, is 1 over A D, so sum i from 1 to n k h x minus x i times sum i from 1 to n k h x minus x i x i squared, minus this times this, but these two are the same, so it's minus this squared. And then here the matrix, the diagonal element swap, so it's sum k h x i squared and some kh here, and then these two stay but get minuses in front, so it's minus some kh xi and minus some kh xi. So that's the result here. And now we have done this, we need to multiply that to x transpose wy. So let's work out what's x transpose wy. x transpose wy is row of 1s, row of xi, w's, well, wy we can maybe do in one go, so it's kh x minus x1 times y1, all the way down up to kh x minus xn yn, and that is a vector of length 2, and you see the first element is just, well, 1s times that, so that's the sum, sum kh yi, and the second element is sum i kh xi yi. So we have this, and now we just need to multiply this matrix to that vector, and we need only the first elements because that's what that does, it says. Actually, I think we need now the full thing, let me remember that, because we are no longer subtracting the x, so let me look this up. Yes, I just found that. Since we don't use the trick of subtracting the x here, we need instead to do 1 and x here, because that part in black gives us the beta hat, and they need to be multiplied with a new point, so beta hat 0 is multiplied with 1, and beta hat 1 is multiplied with x now. In the old setting it was multiplied with x minus x, so it didn't contribute. Okay, since we know this matrix and this vector and that vector explicitly, it's now purely mechanical and you need to just do these multiplications and get the result, and I'll spell that out for you in the notes. So try it yourself, but the result is in the notes. Good, and with this we are in a position we can implement the same thing in R, and we can get this Liefmann out mean squared error for both methods for a range of bandwidth, and we just try different bandwidths again, and choose the one where the mean squared error is minimal. So I've prepared the plots here, so let's have a look. So that is for both methods the leaf run out mean squared error. And on the horizontal axis you see there is the bandwidth h, and then on the vertical axis there is the leaf run out mean squared error, and black corresponds to another Raya Watson estimator, and red corresponds to local linear regression. And I have marked the location of the minimum of both curves with these vertical lines. So the Nadaraya Watson estimator corresponds to the black line and has a bit smaller optimal bandwidth, and the local linear corresponds to the red line and has a slightly larger optimal bandwidth. Let's zoom in a bit. So you see these curves have quite different shapes, and in particular the black curve seems rather flat at the bottom, so there it does really not matter so much whether the bandwidth is 0.2 or 0.5. And the red curve also seems quite benign, but has maybe a more clearly pronounced local minimum. But whatever, so we get these optimal bandwidth, and with this we can come back and just use these bandwidths in the estimators.
and I'll show you later a plot which just shows the estimated model means for both methods using the optimal bandwidth. Before we go there, I want to start another video where we'll just show you the plot and before I do that, we'll show you how do we find k in k-nearest neighbor regression. So see you very soon.